Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm a Hatch educator and welcome to the optimization series. This class will be the first part and it's a beginner class, beginner optimization and making good connections. And we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover how to make the connections, why to make the connections and when to make the connection. The end result will be much better embroidery and a professional level. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is uh, set up our desktop. The only thing I'm missing right now is the resequence tab because we want to see and make sure that we're optimizing everything. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller so we can see. And let's bring in our artwork. And if your artwork doesn't show up here, you may have to save it as a PNG. Sometimes the JPGs or JPEGs don't show up and all you have to do, let me show you what you have to do just because people run into it a lot. Here is my design and this didn't show up. The PNGs that I just made did, but I'm, I'm just going to show you really quickly and this will work on any Windows computer because it is built into Windows. Right click and open with and we're going to go to paint. And the paint is going to open up and all you have to do is file, save as, and PNG. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't need to do it and I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to put hatch back up so you can see it. So if you run into any problems, that's how you do it. So let's go to artwork and we're going to bring in, this is our bug dude. He's just a cool bug that I just doodled. Now let's look at the size of this. How big? Well, it's eight and a half by 11 because that's the sheet that I wanted. That's the size that I uh, scanned it on. But we need to know how big our bug is, not how big our whole graphic is. So let's hit the M key and we're going to measure just even this way, just boom and boom. So he's four inches. So I do want him hit escape to get out of that. Go back to our select key. I do want him a little bit smaller because I do want him to fit into my four by four hoop. Another way I guess you could do it is uh, bring up your four by four hoop and see how well he's going to fit in there. That might even be a little faster. I'm not going to work with the hoop on because I find it distracting, but that's a quick way of doing it. And then you can use the M key and measure and make sure. But that looks good for now. So let's get rid of that hoop. So what we're talking today is we're going to be talking about this whole entire class and a series of three building up difficulty is optimization and making great connections. And this little bug guy, um, buggy, I guess, or Frank, I'll call him Frank. So Frank is just a great little bug and you couldn't really auto digitize it because it's not vectors. But if you were manually digitizing it, it, you would end up with a lot of jump stitches. If you went, did this foot, it's going to jump from here to the start of the next one. And you would end up with a nasty jump stitches across the way or trims your machine. If your machine has a trimmer, it'll trim them. So you could probably have one, two, three, four, five, probably about 15 trims. And we're going to get the jump stitches and the trims down to none. Now, a lot of people ask, why do we do this? It's better embroidery. It's better for your machines. And it's at a much professional level, a much more professional level. It's a difference between beginners and seasons digitizers. Um, digitizers make connections. You can't get rid of all of the jump stitches, of course, but you can do a pretty good job of it. And what it takes to do it is to plot your design out. A lot of digitizers can sit and figure out how they're going to do it. So for example, I would look at this bug, Frank, Frank the bug, and I see it in layers. Now, people don't always see it that way, but this is what the goal is to focus on. And we want to start digitizing with the bottom layer. Now, to me, the bottom layer is going to be the feet, these leg things. I guess they're not feet are down here. Maybe we'll put shoes on them too. So to me, the bottom layer is that. 
The next layer is the head, and then after that, the antennae, and then his body part is going to sit at the top. And that's how I immediately see it. And I've already plotted in my mind, I'm going to go around and do all the legs, and then the antenna and the head and do it all in that order. If it is difficult for you to figure out, and it does, it's a skill, it takes a while to plot it out. Um, but if it's hard for you to envision it that way, then here's a really good suggestion. What I want you to do is take whatever graphic you're using and print it out and grab some pens and plot it out or pencils um, that you can erase or pens that you can erase or colors or number them. And then you can do the plotting and know by the time you start digitizing, you have it all set and you know exactly what you're gonna do and you're gonna get to the business of digitizing. So I have kind of given you example, I've kind of done it, I doodled on Frank, so this is Frank's twin. Um, and I'm gonna, I am gonna make him bigger. We're not gonna leave him up here the whole time, but I just want you to see how my doodles work. So the first that I saw, and I played around with colors too and what it's labeled, I, uh, I ended up scratching out black for the fourth layer because I, you couldn't really see what I was doing. You can kinda see it. So I traded colors and I just used um, gel pens and I just, while I was doing it, I just plotted it out. And the first is I decided I want it in black because it makes a little more sense. And well, all I did was I took a red pen and I plotted it out. Now this is where we're gonna walk and make a connection. So instead of, instead of having a jump stitch that's gonna show from here to here, we're gonna walk it around and we're gonna go here and back and walk it around and here and back the key part is and back and then we're going to walk over to the other side and we're going to do it like that and then we're going to walk up and we're going to do something cool with the antenna and back the antenna and back and we're going to end it here so we're going to start here and we're going to end here and we're not going to have any jump stitches like i said can you imagine how many there would be jump stitches from instead of going across it would go from here to here and this one would go all the way to here he would look like a bug frank would be like a bug in a cob's web a spider's web by the time you finished it and i find this way of approaching designs really helps if you can doodle and draw. It's a skill we're trying to learn and it takes practice. And I think it's a lot easier to practice on pen and paper and draw yourself a map. Grab crayons, grab anything. You can do it a little bit differently. You can color it in or not color it in. You could, you know, take a brighter color and just make your paths and put arrows on it so you know what you're doing. That way, again, by the time you hit hatch and you're ready to do this, you don't have to worry about the plotting. You've already plotted out and you can just attack the design and get through it and you'll be really happy once you learn how to make these connections and don't have jump stitches you'll love it your machine will love it you won't get any pulling you won't have wasting thread you won't spend a whole lot of time trimming i know people think that trimming well that's what they're there for they're supposed to trim yes but if you're doing this design and you have 10 trims which actually isn't bad maybe for a complicated design but each trim takes approximately approximately six seconds to do okay so that's only 60 seconds or one minute so it's going to take you one minute longer to finish this design so what if you do what if you have more say on the head or the antenna and it adds another 10 well that's two minutes so now you've added two minutes to your machine time and your 20 trims and uh you know slowing down the machine doing everything say you had to do this design uh you know 20 times on a shirt that's gonna add up really quickly and if you're selling designs 
and you're giving this to someone and it and you could save them that much time this is the way to do it they will be impressed and your work will be elevated because it is done properly old school maybe but it's still the right way to do it so make connections make good connections reduce the number of jump stitches wherever possible and it will make your embroidery so much better so plotting now we've discussed why we're going to do this i'm going to leave uh colorful frank there frank two frank's twins just kind of up in the corner for the reference now what you can do if you have this printed out you can put it on your desk and you could cross out the parts that you're doing and you could use it as a great reference because you've already done all the hard work so i am going to uh, have it selected frank 2 and i'm going to press the k key and look it puts a little lock there so then i can't move them around i'm just keeping them up for a reference we're going to be zooming in uh, so we won't worry about it but if we forget we can come back i want this to be a special kind of tropical bug so we're going to change some colors so now that we kind of have it plotted out let's go ahead and make these connections and we're going to come up with a few ways to do it now uh, we should be zoomed in to 600 percent i'm going to let that go a little bit because people have told me it's difficult to um kind of get the idea of connection so for the um intermediate and advanced we will be zoomed in because it's assuming that you will know all this but just for ease and just to get everyone going we're just not going to zoom in quite that much i'm going to keep two legs in focus hopefully everyone can see that very well let's get started on the actual digitizing so we're going to add some creativity into frank the bug and we you know you could do this as a running stitch you could do it as a different stitch we're going to play around with it because this is just another one of my doodly doodles and it leaves a lot of room for your creativity for your artistic and you can change it just because you see it doesn't mean you have to do it exactly like that and if we want all the legs to be exactly the same make the whole thing asymmetrical we can i kind of like him uh, you know kind of the way he is with his legs so we're going to do it as we see it but we'll be throwing some ideas around so let's go to digitize and we're going to digitize an open shape and for now um we are going to just use a running stitch and we're gonna we can start here and actually we don't want to start there because we want them all to be the same so we're gonna have to start here and i'm gonna tuck the first one in just about here and we do want black hopefully i picked that i may not have my hatch rhythm going and we want to go there and i'm just left clicking and i'm so used to uh digitizing close up it's hard to see the points and there are a couple of other ways of doing this but we're just trying to keep it simple for this first guy so um that's our first leg and all i did was down and back so we end up you could use repeat there's a couple other things you could do or backtrack i guess is the right one um but we're going to do everything manually so what we want to do then is that we want to walk over to the next one so don't hit enter um but it's okay if you do if you happen to hit enter and you generate it you just start right there and it'll keep going so why don't we do that just for the first one that's probably pretty thin for a leg isn't it but we'll just leave it at that so let's go to so if you hit enter by mistake that's okay or if you have to save and get back to your emb file that's okay um i kind of like the color that it picked too we're just gonna start right where we left off and i want it tucked in and that is our connection and you can do it like that that's that's exactly how to do it that's exactly it now if we want this a bit thicker we can leave spaces but for now we're just going to keep it simple and keep them kind of straight and let's go walk down oops backspace if you make a mistake we want it kind of on the inside because we don't want all of our connection uh 
stitches to show, that's another point I should have made, is that the idea of connections is that you hide them. So when your machine is done stitching, that you cannot see the connection stitches. So I'm going to be hiding these connections, which are right here. I'm going to be hiding them with the body that stitches over top and you won't be able to see them. Now, there's a lot of different ways of making this con connections. If you wanted to, you know, go down here, you could do that. Um, that's just to keep everything the same. We can do it like that and kind of follow the outside. Or you can simply, you know, just kind of zigzag over. And there we are again to the second part. And this is really going to be a game changer when you guys start doing this. This is really fantastic. You don't have to be that precise because, again, we're going to be covering it over. You need to be a little more precise on his legs. So there's another way that, um, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Just let me finish Frank's legs. Frank the bug, I like him. He's going to be super cute. There we go, there we go, and look what we've done. How amazing is that? And I'm gonna leave that there for now, just so we can zoom out. I am gonna continue and do his antennae. Um, just so you can see how that worked out. I think that's fantastic. And that is all one piece. I know it says two pieces, but it will stitch in all one piece. You do not have to connect those or group them if you're moving stuff around or something you can but they will stitch without stopping it'll just pick right up and go and look at that and we've eliminated so many jump stitches and that will stitch out so quickly and so smoothly you'll be amazed absolutely amazed so if you can plot it out like that that's fantastic if you miss a connection, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's pick uh, another color, just red. If you were digitizing, um, say here, and you went out on Frank's leg, and you went back on Frank's leg, and then you, didn't I pick red? I'm sure I did. Boop. Boopily doop. There we go. Red, and we're going to delete them afterwards. And then you decided, I'm going to do this leg, because you weren't thinking about plotting there and back. And the phone rang, and you went and you did something else. And then you're like, oh, I forgot where I left off. So you did this leg. And then you know how life goes. Something else happened. And let's do it again one more time and in this leg. So we're just looking at the red parts. And to me, that might look okay. You might think, hey, what's wrong with that? That's how I always do it. Oh, but let's take the true view off. Looky, looky that mess. These are jump stitches and they're crossing all over and it looks terrible. And we can fix it. We can fix it. You do not have to start all over again. So we're going to ignore all the blue stuff that we did and we're going to start by the red. And what we need to do first is we need to optimize it and then we're going to add in our connections. So this is one, this is two, that's fine. This is three and this is four. So logically you could do it, you would obviously do the other legs, but logically we want it to go around in a circle. There's no point going back and forth and around. So we need to left click and move this guy up. So we have first leg, we have the second leg, we have the third leg, and we have the fourth leg. And that's even better because the jump stitches, you could get away with these two. This one might be a little close here, but you could get away with these two because they will be hidden underneath everything. But let's add our connection. So now we know in our head it's just going from here to here. You don't have to keep flipping back to it. One, two, three, four. I kind of number them in my head. So now what we want to do is make our connections to this. So optimize first, connect next. Pick the same color. And we know how it goes. We know 
and we know we want to do it this way and enter. Now, the problem with that is that we've made another jump stitch. Oh no, how are we going to do that? Well, all we have to do is move our connection into the right spot. So now it's one and one and our connection and then two and that's perfect. And now we want to make another connection because we want two to connect to three. So let's, we have the right colors. We did open shape and we know two ends there. So let's go here, two to three, uh, enter, boom. We've done it again. And again, it's in the wrong order. One, two, so two to three goes right here. And you can double check because it turns color when you're making your connection. So one, two, three, four is the connection. Now we have one more to do in between. So object, connection, object, connection, object, object. We are missing a connection. So let's do that. Let's do our next connection looking at where the last one stopped and the next one started. There we go, enter. And these lines are just going back to the center point, so we're not counting that. And then just to double check everything is up and up, I do this and then I want to make them the closest join, which I think I already have set up. Just to double check everything, I'm going to select and I'm going to apply closest join. And we should be good to go. Let's put on our true view and just the red. Look at that. Lovely. The only thing that was messing us up in this one was this. But you see, there we go. Lovely. And that's how you do it after the fact. If you forget to make your connections, you just have to put everything in order. And my advice would be just put it in logical order. So optimize it and then add your connections. Just remember object, connection, object, connection. Now, if we wanted to change this, we could make it thicker, we can make it thinner. I'm, I'm thinking I might change it to a back stitch. So I'm not, I'm not really sure yet how it's going to look. It's really hard to tell with the picture in the back. So we'll just leave it for now. And we're going to play around with Frank afterwards. So we've done this. So let's cross this off of our list and we'll add jump stitches, but you could do it in stitches because it's on here. The second, oh, I forgot the antenna. Ah, see, that could have been a little bit of a fiasco, but not really. Now, I know we left off here, so we need to, we need to go out of edit and go back into digitize, digitize open shape. And I haven't decided yet how, how we're going to do the antenna, but I do know we're just going to walk up and we want it to end up down here. So if we were to change this to satin stitches right now, it would end there and we're going to have a jump or we're going to have a jump here. So we want it to start here and end here. And you don't want two layers of satin. So the solution is we take our connectors and we make it longer. And we're going to hit enter right there. And I don't want red. I don't want red. I want uh, the blue again. Let's put our true view on so we can see it better. That makes it better. So what we're doing is we're walking up to the end of the antenna and we're going to do some block stitches down to here and then walk over and we're going to do the same thing. And right there doing the antenna like that, we've eliminated, um, quite a few stitches, quite a few jump stitches. So let's count them. If we didn't have a connection, that would be there. And it, so that would be one, that would be two, that would be three and, and there. So three jump stitches just by doing it. And this is fantastic. It's automatically going to be covered up. So, and you don't need to be too particular because even if there's a little jump stitch under there, we're going to be covering it up. So let's do it in a, a couple of pieces. Let's do a little circle. Um, he's just going to have big antenna, I guess. I don't really want it that big and I do want it filled. I do want it filled. My hatch rhythm is off today. And again, I don't want it red. My hatch rhythm is off. 
And because we're kind of making this small, kind of making this small, I might do this part satin. And if you want to change the angle of it, maybe make it more like this of an angle. I like that much better. That's all I did. Reshape is your friend. So I like that. I really like that. Let's do some digitize blocks. Um, you could do it in a couple of different ways. We don't even have to. We could do digitize open shape and we can kind of backtrack on there. We're just going to play around with a couple of ways to do it. As long as we end up where we started, we are good. So that didn't work. I was just thinking motif. Let's go back to select. Sorry, select motif. You know, that's almost a really cute um, antenna. It's just kind of a polka dot antenna. And let's see if there's anything else that would do because that, that just came to me that that would be fun. No, you have to be careful what you're picking. I think the first one that I picked is probably going to be the best. But isn't that an interesting idea that you can do antenna like that just by picking something? Let's see. No, that's not going to work. It's going to be pretty tough to pick something. That might work in a pinch if we were doing it bigger. I don't really think. Well, he could have bows on his antenna. I guess that would work. For now, let's just leave that antenna like that. I, I kind of like that. Um, Not the bows. No, no, not the bows. I didn't mean leave it like that. Hello. Let's do the circles and one for the end. So now we know this ends here. And again, we want the blue. I don't know why I want it blue. I think I'll probably end up changing everything to black, but I know you guys won't be able to see it. So we know we ended here, so we're gonna grab our open shape, and there's also shortcuts to this. You can hit space bar to go in between, but we're, we're doing beginner level, so I'm just taking everything step by step, and we want it in blue and digitize open shape, and we're gonna continue right here, and we're gonna go down, and again, we want to walk up to here, hit enter, and I forgot, I changed everything except for that. <laughs> That's okay, I do it all the time, I just kinda live with it. And what are we gonna do for this antenna? Because we can just be kind of, I, I kinda like this, I kinda like this. Um, yeah, let's just keep it the same, just because I liked it. And what did I do? I digitized, actually, I'm not gonna digitize another circle. I'm going to select the circle that I did and I'm going to right click and drag and drop it right there, so it's the same. And then just for the sake of keeping everything the same, uh, keep the motif and we're going to digitize our way back. And how many jump stitches have we saved? We've saved a lot and there we go. And that's, we're off a little bit on the spacing, but we can mess it. Whoops. We can mess around with that a little bit. All the spacing is down here and we can just fix it up. So Frank's antenna looks better. So let's zoom out again. So we've done all of the black, which I will switch to black afterwards, but for now I'm just going to leave it. And the next part is the head. So another thing to kind of keep in mind is you do want everything. This is part of the optimization, not, not really the connections, but the optimization is that you want your machine to work in a logical way. If you make your machine move from here to here, to here, to back to here, you're kind of not wasting time, but kind of wasting time because logically I could have just done the stitch all the way up to here, but I'm trying to keep it in an end there and then go back to the head. But I'm trying to keep in mind that I want my design completely optimized. So to me, it's better to end here and it's gonna do a thread change. Um, but it doesn't have to move the hoop around. And I think that's just a little tighter optimization. So let's do his head because he's the next on it. And for this one, I want to digitize a closed shape and I want it to be a fill. And we're just going to leave it at tatami right now. I may ch change it to satin or even embossed. But for now, so let's pick a different color too. Let's just do something really weird. So we ended up there and that's where I want to start. So we don't have to make our machine 
move quite as much. Again, it's not all that important, but every optimization helps out. And every little bit makes your machine run better. And let's see, we can make this a little bit better. I am going to actually dim the artwork because I'm finding it a little distracting because I would actually like to be able to see this a little bit, a little bit better. So let's go to artwork and we are going to dim artwork much better. So let's, whoops, let's go to select. Let's delete that. Just, I want it to be a little more curvy delete. I just selected it, hit the delete button. I'm just kind of doing that part again, which happens. Uh, let's go to digitize. Let's do this all over again. Close shape to Tommy. I picked kind of the purple color groovy and we want to start round about there and optimize it. So one, I right click there, left click. See, that's a much smoother curve. I just want one right click here and I want a left click for the corner and I'm going to put it, now we got to be careful that we cover up our stitches, right click and right click and we're going to end there. That's a much better shape. I like it. If you need to tweak that shape a little bit, then we can do that. We'll just move it up. We do want it to start there, but I'm going to move it out of the way. If y'all zoom in, you can see it much better. And we've got a start and a stop right there, but that's okay. That's much better. Let's zoom back out. Isn't that much better to see just by dimming the artwork?